225 motors, and six of those motors went faster than 2,000 RPM, which is a reasonable accomplishment. And the elite is here. These are the elite, the six highest. The winner is um, Jung Eun Lee. I talked to her on the phone last night. If all goes well, she is here. Are you here? Where are you? There you are. Why don't you come up? So that I can con congratulate you in person. I thought about the, the price for a while. And I decided to give you something that is not particularly high tech. But come up here. Give me a European kiss. And another one. <laughs> in Europe we go three. Okay. Um, the price that I have for you is a thermometer which goes back to the days of Galileo Galilei. Come here. It was designed in the early part of the um, 17th century. Uh, it doesn't uh, require any knowledge of 802 to explain how it works. If anything, you need 801. It's not a digital thermometer, but it's accurate to about one degree centigrade. And if you come here, you can tell, you look at these floaters, and the highest floater indicates the temperature. It's now 72 degrees here. Oh, okay. And I suggest that you brush up on your knowledge of 801, so that perhaps next week you can explain to me how it works. <laughs> and, of course, tell your grandchildren about it. You may want to leave it here, it's very fragile. Uh, there is also some package material here so that you can take it home without breaking it. So congratulations once more. And of course, <laughs> terrific. And you will join us for dinner on the 13th of April with the other five winners. Thank you very much. There are two other people who are very special, who I want to mention. And one is a person who is not enrolled in uh, 802, but he did extremely well, and he was very generous, he was not competing. His name is Daniel Wendell, his motor went 4900 RPM. And then there was Tim Lowe. Is Tim Lowe in the audience? I hope he's going to be there at 11 o'clock. Tim made a motor, when I looked at it, I said to myself, it will never run, but it's so beautiful, it was so artistic, that we introduced a new prize, a second prize for the most artistic motor, and Tim Lowe definitely is the one, by far the best, the most beautiful, the most terrific artistic design. And so for him I bought a book on modern art, what else can it be for someone who built such a beautiful motor. It is here, for those of you who want to see it later, it's very hard to display it on television, because it's so delicate, it's like a bird cage that he built, instead of having just loops like that, it's a bird cage. It's very nice. The winning motor I have here, and I'm going to show you the winning motor, and I also want to teach you some, some physics by demonstrating the winning motor to you in a way that you may never have thought of. So this is the winning motor. And when we start this motor, the ohmic resistance of the current loop is extremely low. So the moment that you connect it with your power supply, a very high current will run. But the moment that the motor starts to rotate, you have a continuous magnetic flux change in these loops. And so now the system will fight itself and it will immediately kill the current, which is another striking example of Faraday's law. I will show you the current of this motor when I block the rotor so that it cannot rotate. It's about 1.6 amperes. And you will see the moment that I run the motor that that current plunges by a huge amount. Striking example of Faraday's law. So I now have to first show you this current. So here you see the one and a half volts and on the right side you see the current, there is no current flowing now because the loop is hanging in such a way that, the, that it makes no contact with the battery. And I'm going to try to make it 
There it is. You see the 1.6 amperes on the right? The current is so high that due to the internal resistance of the power supply, the voltage also plunges. But you saw the 1.6, right? Now I'm going to run the motor. See, the motor is running now. And now look at the current. Current now, 40 milliampere, 30 milliampere, 50 milliampere. It's 40 times lower than when I blocked the rotor. And so this is one of the reasons why when you have a, a motor, whichever motor it is, it could be just a drill, you try not to block it all of a sudden because an enormous current will run and it can actually damage the motors. So you see here how the current goes down by a factor of 40 between running and not running. All right. Electric fields can induce 